The Little Brother and Sister Once upon a time, there was a young boy who held his sister's hand and expressed their longing for happiness. Ever since their beloved mother passed away, their stepmother had been mistreating them, constantly subjecting them to beatings and kicks. Determined to escape their miserable situation, the siblings decided to embark on a journey into the vast world. Throughout the day, they roamed across meadows, fields, and rocky paths. As evening approached, they found shelter in a hollow tree within a vast forest, where they eventually fell asleep. The following morning, they awoke to the sun shining brightly in the sky, its rays heating up the tree they had sought refuge in. Overwhelmed by thirst, the little boy expressed his desire to find a brook to quench his thirst. With hope in their hearts, they set off hand in hand, eagerly searching for the sound of running water. The wicked stepmother, however, was a witch and had seen the two children leave. So she followed them secretly, as witches often do, and cast a spell on all the springs in the forest. Soon enough, they stumbled upon a babbling brook, its water flowing merrily over the smooth pebbles. The brother was about to quench his thirst, but the sister overheard the brook whispering, Whoever drinks from me will turn into a tiger. Alarmed, the sister cried out, Please, brother, don't drink from it. You'll transform into a tiger and tear me apart. Heeding her warning, the brother resisted his intense thirst and replied, I'll wait until we find another brook. As they approached the second brook, the sister caught its murmurs, Whoever drinks from me will become a wolf. Frantically, she rushed to her brother, pleading, Brother, please don't drink from it. If you do, you'll become a wolf and devour me. Once again, the brother refrained from drinking, stating, I'll wait until we reach the next spring. But mark my words, no matter what you say, my thirst is too overpowering. Just as they arrived at the third brook, the sister heard a voice whispering, Whoever drinks from me will become a fawn. Filled with worry, she implored, Oh, my dear brother, don't drink from it. You'll transform into a fawn and run away from me. However, he had already knelt down and taken a sip from the water. Instantly, his form changed into that of a graceful fawn. As the first drops touched his lips, the sister initially cried over her little, transformed brother, and he cried as well, kneeling beside her in deep sorrow. However, the sister eventually reassured him, saying, Don't worry, dear little fawn, I will never abandon you. She then took off her golden garter and placed it around his neck, using woven rushes to create a leash. Tying it to him, she held the other end in her hand and led him further into the forest. After a long journey, they stumbled upon a small hut. Curiously peering inside, the sister discovered it was empty and thought, this could be our home. She gathered leaves and moss to create a comfortable bed for the fawn, and every morning she ventured out to gather food for herself, including roots, berries, and nuts, as well as tender grass for the fawn. In the evenings, when the sister grew tired and finished her prayers, she rested her head on the fawn's back, using it as a pillow to sleep peacefully.
If only the brother could regain his true form, their lives would truly be filled with happiness. Thus they lived in this wilderness, and after some time, the king of the country organized a grand hunt in the forest. The sound of horns, the barking of dogs, and the enthusiastic cries of the hunters echoed through the trees. The little fawn couldn't help but hear them and felt a strong desire to join in the excitement. Oh, he exclaimed to his sister, I can't hold myself back any longer. He pleaded persistently until she finally agreed. However, she cautioned him, make sure to return in the evening. I will close my door to keep out the wild huntsmen. To let me know it's you, knock on the door and say, Sister, dear, let me in. If you don't speak, I won't open the door. The little fawn happily bounded away in the fresh breeze after speaking, and the king and his huntsmen gave chase but couldn't catch him. Just as it was getting dark, he arrived at his sister's hut and asked to be let in. The next morning, he couldn't resist the sound of the hunt and asked his sister to open the door. She reminded him to return in the evening and say the same words. When the king and his huntsmen saw him again, they pursued him closely. But he was too quick for them with his golden necklace. The huntsmen, having observed all this, went and told the king what he had seen and heard, and he said, On the morrow I will pursue him once again, the next day, as soon as the king noticed him, he instructed his huntsmen to follow him throughout the day until evening, ensuring that no harm came to him. When the sun had set, the king requested his huntsmen to lead him to the hut. As they arrived, he knocked on the door and affectionately said, Let me in, dear sister. The door opened, revealing a maiden more stunning than anyone the king had ever seen. She was startled to see a man with a golden crown on his head instead of her fawn. However, the king, gazing at her with warmth, extended his hand and asked, Will you come with me to my castle and be my beloved wife? Oh, yes, the maiden replied, but the fawn must come too. I will never abandon him. The king assured her, he will stay with you for as long as you live and will never be in need. After the king and the beautiful maiden rode to his castle, they celebrated their wedding with great splendor. She became queen and they lived together for a long time. Meanwhile, the fawn was well taken care of and played in the castle garden. However, the wicked stepmother, who had caused the children to wander into the world, had assumed they were dead. When she learned of their happiness, envy and jealousy consumed her. She could not rest until she found a way to bring misfortune upon them, the witch's own daughter, who was not blessed with beauty and had only one eye, was constantly criticized for her appearance. She lamented, I have never had the fortune of being a queen. The wise old woman comforted her, saying, Don't worry, my dear. When the time is right, I will come to your aid and support you. When the moment arrived and the queen gave birth to a beautiful baby boy while the king was away hunting, the old witch disguised herself as a chambermaid. She entered the room where the queen lay and said, The bath is ready to rejuvenate you and give you strength. Hurry before it cools down. 
With her daughter by her side, they carried the weak queen into the room and placed her in the bath. Then they closed the door and hurried away. However, before leaving, they lit a massive fire in the stove, which would soon suffocate the poor young queen. After completing the task, the elderly lady gently carried her daughter and placed a cap on her head before carefully tucking her into the queen's bed. She also tried her best to make her daughter look exactly like the real queen, but unfortunately, she couldn't restore the missing eye. To prevent the king from noticing, she positioned her daughter in such a way that the side without an eye was hidden. When midnight arrived and everyone was fast asleep, the nurse, who sat alone and wide awake near the cradle in the nursery, witnessed the door gently open. To her surprise, the true queen entered the room. With utmost care, she picked up the child and gently rocked it for a while. After fluffing up the pillow, she placed the child back in the cradle and covered it lovingly. The queen didn't forget about the fawn either. She went to the corner where he was resting and affectionately stroked his head before silently leaving through the door. The next morning, the nurse inquired with the guards if anyone had entered the castle during the night. However, they replied, No, we haven't seen anyone. For many nights that followed, the queen continued to visit, but she never uttered a single word. The nurse always saw her, but she couldn't bring herself to share this secret with anyone. The queen spoke one night, asking about the well-being of her child and fawn, and made a mysterious statement about only visiting twice more. The nurse informed the king, who decided to keep watch himself the next night. The queen appeared again, repeating her questions and her warning of only visiting once more. On the third night, the king watched again and the queen came for the final time, asking about the child and fawn and stating that it would be her last visit. She cared for the child and disappeared, leaving the king to ponder the meaning of her words. The king couldn't hold back any longer and jumped up, exclaiming, You must be my beloved wife. In response, she confirmed, Yes, I am your beloved wife. In that very moment, God's mercy restored her life, and she regained her beauty and charm. She revealed to the king the deceitful actions of the witch and her daughter, leading to their trial and subsequent sentencing. The enchanted fawn returned to his human form, and the brother and sister lived joyfully together until the end of their days. Okay, friends, this is the end of this folktale. Hope you enjoyed it. To continue, go to the next one.